Hey, so I've been going back and forth lately over what I can teach you now. Since I think most of you have gotten the uh, stack nib thing going on, you've kind of got it at a decent place. Um, and then it occurred to me one thing I could talk about is retipping and why it's a pain in the rear. So once again, we've got our, you know, ever so lovely Jin Hao. And you notice that I've got the slit shimmed open. If you're going to retip, if you don't do this, when you cut through the new ball, you have to slit the entire nib over again. And it's hard enough, if you're doing this freehand, just to do the ball and get it straight. Now imagine trying to do that all along the slit. Best of luck. Um... So what you do before you put a new ball on, <laughs> I said ball, anyway, is to uh, put a shim right up the middle where it needs to go. Um, got our trusty Jin Hao as usual. What we've got that's the other pin in the rear is a 1.5 millimeter stainless steel ball. Why am I using stainless steel? Because right now I can't afford real tipping balls. I've got about, oh, uh, not a lot left. If you've ever wondered what a double broad tipping ball looks like, it's about 1.6 millimeters. So, that's what they look like. They're a pain in the rear to get. Um, and they cost a good bit of money. Whereas, where the hell did it go? Oh, there it is. This little guy, you can get about a hundred of them for maybe five bucks. The nice thing is, it's hardened 440 stainless if you've ever done any knife making or know anything about stainless steels. It's a decent cutlery grade. It's hardened so it's Rockwell hardness is around 60. The tipping ball I just showed you is around 74. That's a modern alloy. Tipping balls, you know, osmium, ruthenium, osmium, iridium alloys were not as hard as this is. Uh, that's part of the reason why they actually needed to be replaced after a long period of time. So I've been using the stainless for a while just on test nibs. And really, it's not bad. Um, you get a nice smoothness that's tough to get with anything other than, say, platinum or tipping material. So what I'm going to do is turn this off for a second, lop his head off, and I'll tell you some more about this whole thing. So, bear with me. Hello again. So, chopped his head off. He didn't feel a thing. Um, one thing I want to mention. Balls are round. The end of the tip, if it's been sheared off, worn down, what have you, is not round. Because I'm not using a uh, resistance welder, or a capacitive discharge, which is what the big manufacturers are using and some uh, other tipping people. Um, those work, if you've watched some of the videos on YouTube, like Pilots has a really great one. They're coming down or up at the tipping material, and it is, because of the type of welder it is, instead of doing little micro welds around things, it literally just blows that ball onto that nib and fuses the two together. And if you're doing that, you can have a flat surface. That's great, it's not gonna matter. But if you're using a pulse arc or something like it, you actually have to get in here and curve it so that it approximates the diameter of that 
little damned ball that's right here. So that uh, when you sit them together underneath the welding needle, you get decent contact points because if you don't, it's not going to weld. Um, I also want to recommend you can get these again from AliExpress. Uh, marvelous ceramic ended tweezers. Um, that way they're not going to weld anything. Simple. Um, I'm going to try and get that tip on that nib. Um, I don't know if I can set this up so you can see me do it, so I'm not going to try. But if I manage it, well, I, I guess I'll film some more. So hang out. So, did I manage it? Yes. Like I was saying before, capacitive discharge or resistance welders, they might be the same thing for all I know about welding. Contact, they melt the things together. Great. To get that ball on here took me eight welds. It's not even on center. Kind of, sort of. But still not great. Looking for, once again, something I can't find because I've been working on a lot of stuff and when I do that, I don't clean up. But, can you see? Maybe? It has a ball now. The next fun part is getting in there, praying, and slitting this thing freehand which is where these lovely little dudes come in. They're 0 0.006 of an inch in width. They're, if you've seen any of the other videos where I actually break one of these little guys, they're very fragile. And if you don't get it right, you've wasted a nib. But if you're just using stainless steel and gin house, Eh, no big deal. So, let me stick one of these on the mandrel and see if I can slit this. I'm going to do that off camera because you really don't need to hear me swearing that much. It doesn't matter what time of day it is. So, I'll get back to you in a minute. So, were you out there anticipating? Maybe uh, waiting to see what happens next? Did he make it? Did you slit it? Actually, yeah. I think the only reason this worked is because I'm doing it for you, not for me. Um, you find out real quick that, uh, well, the ball wasn't quite centered with the weld. You know, really? For these purposes, that's fine. What's really great is it actually went dead center right where it should. So what I've got here is a nib with a ball on it that's ready to grind to fun shapes um, and get tested and enjoyed and probably broken in the process because when you do the grinding, you find out that your weld was good or you find out your weld was bad, and if the weld is bad, something else shoots off into the darkness of your workshop, never to be found again until you're walking around barefoot. And I guarantee you, that's when things show up. Always. Always. So, thanks for watching. Comment if you'd like to. Subscribe if you'd like to. Like if you'd like to. Please, if you've got any questions, drop me a line. If you have anything you'd like to see that I haven't talked about, please comment and let me know. That way I can keep making fountain pen nib and stuff videos that are useful for you, fun for me, and, you know, contribute something to our community. So, stay safe, take care of yourselves, be healthy, eat some pasta, eat some scotch eggs, a little red wine, a little whiskey, 
little this, little that. You know, live it up. Cook at home. Buy some yeast. Hoard it. Take care.